Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to get started with this mantle build. Here's a really simple build. The greatest thing about it is you can use one by six pre-primed pine boards, which are very cheap. And this is a super simple build. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps as I go. First thing I'm doing here is cutting the boards to length. I'm actually going to oversize the boards because what I need to do after this is bring it over to the table saw and I need to cut bevels on all sides and then I'm going to cut the miters on all ends because this is going to be um, a miter fold style build for this mantle. First thing I have to do is set my blade to 45 and a half degrees and that's going to give me a nice area for the ends to come together but also somewhere for the glue to spread out and not compress too much. Now, unfortunately, when I shot this video, I didn't have the Jessam clear cut stock guides yet, which I just did a video about previously. And if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's actually really awesome. So I'm using a feather board here, but I really wish I had those stock guides because it would just been so much easier. And if you head over to that video, you'll understand why. Now, also keep in mind that this can also be done with the track saw. I used to do it that way before I got my table saw back in the shop. So if you have a track saw and not a table saw, you can still do this. So I've had a few people ask me what that was on the side of my table saw, and this is uh, basically a new addition here. I uh, purchased with my own money. This is not sponsored in any way. This is the sliding table attachment, and it is for cross-cutting. And I'm going to use this here to cross-cut the mitered ends of the miter fold for the mantle. Uh, this has been really good so far um, on all the builds that I've done, and it's great for cabinetry. You're going to see this in the upcoming uh, video for the closet built-ins that I'm going to do in a walk-in closet. Uh, it saves me a lot of time on bigger panels, but it also is very accurate on smaller cuts. And you can go and bevel your miter saw and do it there, but I'm all about saving time. And since I already have the blade beveled to the correct angle, I'm just going to cut it right here at the table saw and save a lot of time. Another thing that's super important to not only accuracy but saving some time is having repeatability. And this sliding table attachment has a stop block on it, so I'm making sure that I utilize that so that all the parts are the same size that I need so they line up perfectly when we do the miter fold. Once I have all the parts cut, I lay them out on the workbench and then I flip them over. Uh, I usually have the, when I lay them out, I have the bevels facing upwards and that is so I know how they are going to be positioned when the edges go together when I flip it over. So this way I can apply the tape to the back of the seams. The tape is the method uh, that we're going to use here for this miter fold for the glue up because it's strong and the glue itself is all you need. You can use nails uh, as a fastener or dominoes, but you really don't need to. If you use the tape method with the glue, once it sets, it'll be pretty much indestructible because the glue is actually stronger than the wood itself, so you don't need a mechanical fastener. Now, for this method, what you want to do is use a good, strong packing tape, and after you apply the tape to all the seams, just take a uh, rounded over piece of wood that doesn't have a sharp edge and just like burnish in that tape over the seams. Press on it firmly and run it down the line. That'll give you a really good bond. Once all the tape is in place on the seams, I like to just fold it down the bench towards me. And then this way, everything kind of just like falls together in the box shape that it's going to take. And so just let that happen. And then you can flip it over on the bench to expose the, the seams where you need to glue those bevel joints together. Now, I like to use Type Bond 3 for these glue ups because it is a, a longer open time. Uh, it is a water resistant glue. Uh, I think maybe that's why the chemical makeup gives it a longer open time. But uh, Basically, when you're doing something like this, you don't want to glue to set too fast because you're not allowed to work the joint at that point. Once you glue this together and you flip it over, I'm going to show you a technique where I burnish the miters and make everything come together perfectly. You need a longer open time for that. Now, you're also going to notice here that I'm using spacer blocks, and these are cut to the size of the interior dimensions of the mantle. Not only will this uh, give it a uh, more rigid um, stability and help with the glue up when you're clamping it together basically, uh, but it also keeps everything square. You want to make sure that you leave room for your mounting cleat because if you cut this right to the edge of the board, you won't be able to mount the mantle on the cleat on the fireplace itself. So give yourself at least two inches of room because we're going to be attaching this with a two by four, which is one and a half inches thick. Now for the end caps, I'm using miter spring clamps here and that's going to hold it in place until the glue sets. 
Once I position the end caps and I have the miter spring clamps installed and I have it sitting where I want, that's when I find it easiest to glue and slide in the spacer blocks. And once I have everything positioned correctly, what I do is use the packing tape as a clamp and I just pull it right over the top from one side to the other with a lot of pressure and that acts as a clamp holding the, the two sides together and actually squeezing in that spacer block in the center. And it, this is going to be you know, the way you need to clamp it up for you to let the glue set. You don't need to actually go and get any expensive clamps. I just have a parallel clamp there on the side in case I need to squeeze anything together to make a joint fit more properly. But I really haven't used it at all. And once you have everything clamped in place and flipped over, take any kind of a round piece of steel tool that you have and use it as a burnisher. Even the, the shank of a, of a Phillips head screwdriver that's round. You can just burnish in those edges and you'll compress those miters and the bevels. And you'll make everything just like really smash together and it will just appear to be one smooth transition so that it looks like an actual solid beam mantle instead of a bunch of pieces put together. Now you can let this glue set anywhere from two to four hours and then you can rip this tape off. I actually chose to let it sit overnight because I ran out of time and so basically I'm just ripping the tape off now but it's been 24 hours and this thing is ready to be worked on. Now this mantle is going to have a slightly distressed look on it so what I'm doing is I'm giving it a light sanding and I'm taking off some of the paint mostly on just the edges and the corners. This way it, it appears to be distressed and old. Now I bought these corbels that were uh, made on a CNC machine and uh, they actually they were relatively cheap. Uh, you can get these anywhere. Even at the local big box stores they sell uh, similar ones to this. Uh, so I'm basically just using a, a brush and some paint and I'm just kind of feathering in the paint and missing some of the areas in the crevices to make it appear that these are all uh, worn out and weathered a little bit. Now the corbels need to be attached to a backer. So I'm using a three quarter piece of uh, white pine and we're gonna attach that to the bottom of the mantle with, you guessed it, pocket screws. But uh, the pocket screws are to attach it to the mantle. To attach the pine to the uh, back of the corbel, I'm just using screws from the back side to attach that. This way it holds in place. Now the reason you need a backer board on the corbels is because I, you know, if you're installing this on a fireplace and you're going to wrap stone around it, like I'm using stacked stone, the basic uh, part of the back where all the detail is of the corbel would disappear in behind the thickness of the stone. So you want to make sure that that protrudes out a little bit so you can't just mount the corbel right to the bottom of the mantle. So now that I have the corbels attached to the back boards, I'm going to attach those to the back of the mantle. And I'm going to position that with a combination square because that's going to make sure that I position it uh, the equal distance from each end of the mantle. Accuracy. You've got to always remember accuracy. So use your measuring and marking tools because that's going to help you a lot. Apply a little bit of glue and then you can attach it with those pocket holes. And now I'm just going to put one screw through the dead center towards the front from the inside of the mantle into the top of the corbel and that should ensure that there will be absolutely zero failures and this will never separate from the mantle. And now it's time to flip it over and see what we have and get ready for a clear finish. Now if you remember we used um, the distressing technique here to make this have that antique finished look. So we want to make sure we protect all those edges and we don't want any of the paint to flake off. So we're just going to spray three coats of clear over it. Okay, so I have the cleat installed on the fireplace already and uh, I framed this out and installed the cement board in the fireplace at least two and a half to three months ago. Uh, and I'm finally getting around now to uh, installing the mantle that I built. And th this whole project has been going on for a while because there's so much work that I've been doing like sporadically throughout the whole entire house. So uh, I mounted the two by four cleat. Uh, right to the studs through the cement board and now I'm installing uh, a bead of construction adhesive. Make sure that when you put your cleat on you're leveling the cleat as perfect as possible because that's going to make it easy for you to install the mantle. Now once you have that mantle installed it's going to be perfectly level. All you got to do is make sure you set it into that construction adhesive and then you can install some screws through the very back of the mantle into that cleat from the top and then it's going to be covered up by the mortar and the stone that you install. Now if you're installing this on say uh, a fireplace that would have maybe shiplap, you would also do the shiplap after the mantle was installed and that would hide the screws and then your caulking and all that would, uh, would help to hide that. 
Now, I didn't film the installation of all the stone because mixing the mortar and getting the stone to set and everything, it was just too time consuming and I'm not a pro at it, but it came out really nice. But I do intend to do a future video on installing this kind of stone, probably doing it on the outside of my house, so I will film it. So definitely stay tuned for that. And now for some quick little finishing touches here, some decor, some uh, candlesticks that are kind of distressed a little bit, and a little plant there. And I'm hammering a small finish nail in, in the center, uh, approximately about four to five inches away from the stone. And that's going to be my little cleat so that I can put a mirror on there on an angle in the center, and there'll be no danger of it sliding forward. My cousin came and helped me with the first part of the bottom. Two people with four hands always moves a lot faster, so he helped me get started and we got up to here. And then um, he had to leave, so I took over the rest by myself. I put a small finish nail right here in the front of where the mirror is uh, leaning, so this way it can never slide out forward. Um, if you're not comfortable with doing something like that, then you can just get like one of those uh, anti-skid pads and stick it to the bottom of the mirror or you could anchor it to the stone. The reason I didn't anchor it to the stone is because I don't feel like drilling into the stone, putting an anchor in there with a screw, and then if we decide that we don't wanna have this uh, decoration here anymore uh, at some point, then you know we can get rid of it without having a huge hole in the mortar or the stone behind it, and then we could you know change up the design. So that's it, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you check the links in the description for the tools that I used in this video and also hit the little picture of a notification bell. That's gonna notify you every time I upload a new video and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me.